anomalies in charged particle counts, field characteristics, and radio signals associated with L-shells have been detected before earthquakes, along with other fluctuations of Earth's magnetic field. There is an extensive and growing body of work on the electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes and on electric coupling between the ground, atmosphere, and ionosphere. Downward electron flow and interaction with positive holes before an earthquake can determine the completion of a circuit during an earthquake and set the magnetization characteristics of the fault area beforehand. Studies of crustal resistivity can give clues to the structure of the fault and many fault zones contain low resistivity crustal contents. Models of the Earth's crust as a capacitor allow fluctuations of the global electric circuit and magnetic system to complement known mechanisms for the production of electric currents and other electromagnetic signals before and during earthquakes, specifically via space weather modulation of geomagnetism, ground currents, and various other aspects of the global electric circuit. Number 5. On November 8, 2015, one year ago, we began using the Global Electric Circuit to predict magnitude 6 and higher earthquakes. In addition to warning about aftershocks in Chile, our first ever Earth Energy Alert saw a flux at Sumatra, Japan, and Vietnam. The first timestamp is important, it's Eastern Time, so this translates to 1502 UTC, which is important because just 105 minutes later at 1647 UTC, a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake struck Sabang, Indonesia, which is in the northern part of Sumatra near the 2004 Christmas tsunami disaster. Within just five days, Japan struck as well with a magnitude 6.7 earthquake. Chances of this double hit success by random, 0.2%. Number four, our very next alert period began on November 10th, 2015, and this time it was just Chile and Peru on alert, and we also restricted the magnitude of the ruptures likely to be seen. The very next day, two magnitude 6.9 earthquakes struck the alert zone one hour apart. Chances of this success should have been less than 0.5%. In the first two weeks, we would predict six earthquakes in total, with half of all alert periods posted being successful. We regrouped and studied for nine months, made some changes, and came back in the fall of 2016. Number 3. September 7, 2016. Chile and Peru were on our minds again, only spot on Earth to be on alert, but this time the watch zone extended up towards and into Colombia. Three days later, a magnitude 6 earthquake struck Peru in the heart of the alert area. Luckily, it was deep and caused very little damage. On the last day of the week-long watch, another magnitude 6 struck, this time in Colombia. This one much shallower and felt throughout populated regions. Chances of this success were approximately 1%. Number 2. October 29, 2016, our first use of the alert star to signify where we were most worried about a large seismic event. Everything in the world pointed to Italy, and while most were thinking it was over after a magnitude 6.1, we called for a magnitude 6.5 or higher, and what struck the very next day was a magnitude 6.6. .6. The higher magnitude offsets the increased probability of such an event via four shocks for about a 0.7% chance of success by random. Last but not least, number one, our last forecast of the year, ending on a high note with the second use of the alert star. The primary focus was Chile once again on November 3rd and a magnitude 6.4 struck the north central portion of the country one day later. While this Chile prediction actually had a 4% chance of hitting during the six day alert, the last two watch periods used the alert star for the first time and both got big hits. We learned from the world's best scientists, taking the best nuggets each had to offer, and in the first year of predicting magnitude 6 or greater earthquakes with the model, 
We made 18 total watch periods and 11 of those were successful. Our expected success rate was 6.5% with an expected successful prediction of one or two earthquakes if we're lucky. Our success rate was 61.1% overall in fact, up from 50% in the first two week trial period, and we predicted 17 total earthquakes magnitude 6 or greater. While the alert periods were only nine times more successful than expected, the multiple hit periods decreased the chances of this success being random to one in more than a hundred thousand. Going forward, the home of our earthquake forecast will be the Disaster Prediction app, which comes out this winter, and our method will be described in full at Observing the Frontier 2017, April 8th and 9th in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Be safe, everyone.